We are back on top, baby. Top of the league. Yes, come on. That is exactly what we needed. Welcome back to Operation Arsenal. We've just beaten Wolves away from home. That's a very tricky away game, by the way. We've beaten them 2-0 and we have returned to the top of the table. Whilst we've played an extra game, as you can see here, Man City, Liverpool yet to play. Liverpool play tomorrow against Fulham, I believe. Uh, yep, there you can see Fulham away. Tough game for them as well. Fulham on their day can really be quite difficult. And Man, C Man City will play Brighton away, which I believe they lost. Did they lose that fixture last season? I'm not sure when that game is. They obviously played today against Chelsea and got lucky, in my opinion. Um, it, it doesn't matter, okay? The point is, the points are on the board. That is all you can ask for. Over the years, I, I can remember many occasions where Arsenal have a couple of games to play and we're chasing. And a lot of people will say, oh, yeah, we've got three games in hand. If we win all three, we go here. That is not what you want. What you want is your games before. You want to get the points on the board. Even if somehow you've got less points that way, it's a mentality thing. We now relax because Man City and Liverpool have to do a job to keep up with us. And I will always say this. If you're offering me 27 points on the board before the other other teams play or 30 points but we play after them obviously that isn't a guarantee and this is completely made up it's a made up scenario but I think you know what I'm getting at I'd rather guarantee points on the board than have a chance to get more points if that makes sense because we're Arsenal <laughs> and those points that we can fight for it, it it never really quite goes to plan but tonight it did go to plan. That was a fantastic performance. Did you know that is now six away clean sheets in a row? That is unheard of. That is seriously impressive. And Wolves, I think this is the first or maybe the second game this season where they failed to score at home. They always score at home. So not only have we got two goals on the goal difference as well today, that last minute goal from um, Erdegaard, huge for the goal difference, if you ask me. I mean, Every goal counts at this point. But to get such a good defensive performance as well and stop a team that are very difficult to stop from scoring at home, to actually do that is really quite something. And I'm so happy with that. And honestly, it's very easy to talk about the defenders all the time. But this man right here, Raya, who remembers the constant talk? Ramsdale, Raya, who's it going to be in goal? And a lot of fans, including myself, Really didn't appreciate it at the time. It sucked. That's all people talked about. For me, they were so evenly... I, I would honestly, at that point, have told you, I don't mind who's in goal. They're both as good as each other. Raya is maybe slightly better with the ball at his feet, and I'm a bit more confident with the way we play around the back with Raya in goal. But then I would have argued that Ramsdale was such a huge part of last season, the resurgence of Arsenal Football Club under Mikel Arteta... I think you could also make some arguments that he's better in the air or maybe at least a better shot stopper. But realistically, it was very close. But as the weeks and months have gone by and all of these games that we've had, Raya's obviously become number one and we can all see why. He's a better goalkeeper. He's a better player. He's, I think, a better leader as well. I, I Obviously, I'm not in the changing room and seeing Ramsdale and Raya and what the differences are. But you can see Raya commanding the defence and... I love the guy. And I don't think Ramsdale is better in the air. I think at that time, I would have argued because of his height, he is probably better in the air. He's a little bit taller than Raya. But Raya is an absolute monster at catching the ball and, and, and jumping up from corners. And he's incredible at everything. And I really, really like Raya. And the reason I'm talking about him right now is because that first half save, I think it was, was it Jao Gomez? I think it was, should have scored. Absolutely. Kivior made an absolutely horrendous decision to try and like head the ball or chest it or whatever. And Jao Gomez has nicked it and, and basically has a free shot on goal. And Raya's tipped it onto the post. Whether he knew much about it or not, I don't know. But incredible reflexes. And if that goes in, I'm telling you, hell breaks loose because we're in a bit of a, a rut at the moment. And going 1-0 down away to Wolves, which... I've already said, is a really tricky game. This has been a bit of a bogey fixture for us over the years. Who remembers the David Luiz red card? Oh, my God. So it really could have gone the other way if that went in. So thank you, Raya. 
And thank you, Gabrielle, Saliba and Ben White for um, having a, a very good first half performance. I thought it was just Kivior that really let the defence down for the first 45 minutes, but he was a lot better in the second half. And coincidentally, we were a lot better in the second half. I mean, actually looking at the momentum here, it's it's maybe a little bit even, but if you actually watch the game, ignoring stats and graphs and all this stuff, you would have seen that we were much more comfortable in the second half and that helped Kivior, I think, settle down a bit more because we didn't have the Wolves player in behind us all the time and he was able to actually build up play with the rest of the players down that left side and and that's what we want to do. I was really, really, really impressed with Declan Rice again. Man of the match performance. He actually got the highest rating here on FOTMOB, but he was given given the player of the match. Don't say man of the match. You're not allowed to say that anymore. He's just... Uh, he's so consistent. It's scary. And what I don't understand is how in the 89th minute, I think it was, he's running at full pelt, full sprint speed through the defence and getting across in the box. And obviously no one's there. Everyone's knackered. And this guy's like, hello? And he just sits on the advertising board, like taking a few breaths and he's up and he's running again and winning the ball back. And this guy has unlimited stamina. And he's so available. He's never injured. Touch wood, he won't get injured. But honestly, Rice is, for me, the best signing we've made in a good few years. And we've made a few. And whilst he is obviously, what was it, 105 million, he's worth every single penny. Now, can we stop this? Can, can we can we go back to Havertz up top? I don't know why we've gone again with Havertz in midfield. He did okay, but he's so much better in that number nine role. And let's just drop Jesus. Honestly, I, I like Jesus in terms of the energy and the press. And he's obviously very good with the ball. Okay, he's technically gifted for sure. But he just ain't a striker and he just doesn't offer enough for us going forward. It's another game without a goal for him today. He looked so disappointed coming off. He got an assist, um, but a very forgetful game from Jesus. Just, just not enough. And the assist, by the way, was fluky as hell. It just bounced off his foot. And Trossard, one of the most underrated players in the league. What a finish. Another big goal from him. Saka, another bit of a stinker today. Didn't really offer much going forward, but... Um, as long as we win, I, I just don't care about individual performances. At this point in the season, it's just all about getting those points. And that's what we've been able to do. We can take a look at the stats a little bit more here. Um, Wolves really didn't have a very good time in front of goal today. They aren't a bad team, by the way. I really appreciate Wolves and how O'Neill's got them set up. And they have some great players. And they were playing a couple of youngsters today. That um, striker, I think he was playing up front on his own. This Chirua guy. Chiru and Shriore was very good, I thought. But um, they can have as much ball as they want. They need to be doing better with it. You know, they need to be scoring more, clearly having better chances. And whilst I don't think at home it's an issue for them and they've come up against the best defence in the league today, um, they normally score a lot of goals at home. But I, I think away from home, maybe that's that's an issue for them. Are they going to look for a striker in the summer? Maybe, but five shots, three on target. Only an expected goals of 0.14. Again, if you if you look at stats, it doesn't paint the whole picture. I'd actually say that Wolves had some pretty good chances today. Um, a lot of them, the final ball just not quite right. Obviously, they're going to be absolutely fine this season. And I'm, I'm not worried about Wolves going into next season either. They're always going to be a Premier League team, I think, for the foreseeable future. Uh, but they, they probably could be a little bit higher than 11th. I think if there's one team, maybe there's two or three teams in total, but one team that always springs to mind... Who's been wronged by VAR the most? It's Wolves. It really is. They have been destroyed by VAR this season. And um, I feel kind of bad for them, to be honest. Now, where is he? Are they not showing him? Okay, Tomiyasu. Where is Tomiyasu? What, what, I mean, it doesn't make sense to me. Tomiyasu, okay, I love the guy because he's such a versatile player. He's clearly very intelligent. I love the fact that he's got a left foot and a right foot. He's very, very two-footed, both-footed, I should say. But again, comes back from an injury, a relatively lengthy injury, plays a game, injured. Twice now. I, I think I'm right in saying that. This happened last time, right? He played one game when he returned and then he was injured again. Now, this isn't good enough now. This is acceptable when you're struggling for top four like we were for so long. Because, okay, you get a quality player like that, you can afford to carry a luxury player if they put in a good performance every now and again because you're not chasing the title, okay? But we're chasing titles now. We're 
somewhat competitive in the Champions League. We can't have a player like Tommy Yasu who needs to be fit. He's such a good player, right? Just getting injured all the time. Same with Partey. And guess what? Partey's going in the summer. There's no doubt about it. And by the way, he was brilliant when he came on and we've missed him. But he's another player that has so much ability, so much quality, but lacks availability. And I don't need to say what I always say. It's the same with Tommy Yasu, and it's really frustrating. Another thing I want to talk about is Martinelli as well, because he came on and had a couple of good moments, especially towards the end. He probably should have scored. Um, although there was another chance, he probably should have squared it to Saka and he went for the shot. But Martinelli, what, what is he so good at? What is his strength? And for me, it's his pace in behind specifically. I don't necessarily see him as an out and out winger, like hugging the touchline. But when he does that, he can get in behind and go more central. He comes in off that left channel. Why, oh, why have we not seen this over the last few weeks whenever he's come on? Martinelli has not been played to his strength recently, and it was so good to see in that last minute one of those typical Gabriel Martinelli runs. Would have loved to have seen him finish that, and I hope we get more of him in behind because that is his best, best skill, his best aspect to his game, and we're just not getting the best out of him from, from that respect. Very frustrating to see him coming back and defending all the time because I guess he has to. It's the instructions of his role. Saka is the more predominant winger to get forward and create chances and score goals. So to balance the team, I guess that is what it is. And talking of strengths, one of the best things that we've been able to do all season long is score from set pieces, whether it's corners, free kicks, penalties, whatever. But any type of cross into the box, whether it's a dead ball situation or just a normal cross, we're so, so dangerous. Yet... Again, today, and it's been the last few matches, we look spineless and toothless when it comes to set pieces to the point where I think the players have given up and we're actually always going short. Why are we all of a sudden not prioritising this play anymore? Because it was such a beautiful moment. Every time we got a corner, it's whipped in and we score. Because it's not, it's not an easy thing to do that. We've got such a physical team now. We've got so many tall players. I mean, honestly... Every single player in defence is six foot plus today. You've got Declan Rice and Havertz as well, both very tall. Saka might not be the tallest, but he's obviously very strong, but very good at whipping in the corners. We've got Rice who can take it on the left. Why all of a sudden are we taking free kicks short and quickly and getting it wrong? Why are we taking free kicks and passing it short? Why are we not whipping it into the box more? I don't understand. It's one of our biggest strengths and all of a sudden we're not doing it. And one last thing. Should Kilman have been sent off? Not that it really matters. And whilst it's it's not much of a debate, it wasn't the craziest challenge I've ever seen. But it is something worth talking about because I do feel like if that was an Arsenal player going in on a Wolves player, it would have been looked at a little bit more. He's gone in a little bit late, but Havertz was late in there too. And Kilman has then followed through with this other leg, kind of like a scissor action hitting above the ankle. It's gone over the ball as well. I mean, I just feel like that would have been talked about a lot more if it was the other way around. So I thought it's worth mentioning. I think Kilman was a little bit lucky there. Maybe you could claim that's a bit of an orange card. <laughs> anyway, let's have a look at our fixtures coming up, guys, because it's one final five to go. One final down, five to go, I mean. So, of course, it's Chelsea on Tuesday, which is a big game. They're, they're really hitting some form at the moment. We need to put them back in their place. And then, of course, we're away to Tottenham at the weekend. That is a huge game. Bournemouth, if it was an away game, I'd be a bit more worried, but we should be winning that at home. And then the big one, the one that I think is going to test us the most, just because it's Old Trafford, Manchester United away. It's a bit of a mental block, similar to Anfield. Um, I'm not saying we're going to drop points. I'm not saying I'm expecting us to drop points, but I think out of all of these fixtures, this is the most likely one. And I did say that Wolves was going to be one to watch out for. And I'm so, so happy we've come away with a, a green box there. And I'm just hoping that'll be green. That'll be green. That'll be green. That'll be green. And then this will be the day where if we make that green, we win the title. Because I truly believe if we win every single one of these games will win the title. I think City will drop points and I think Liverpool will too. And actually, I think Liverpool will drop points tomorrow at Fulham and I think that'll rule them out of the title race and I think it'll be Arsenal and City all the way. I might be wrong. Um, I hope I'm not. I, I want, obviously, Liverpool to be out of this race so it's just two. Just, just 
back to last season, just Arsenal and City. And hopefully it goes better this time. But thank you for watching, guys. Hopefully you've enjoyed the review. And um, tomorrow we've got part two of my FIFA 15 going back in time um, mini series. You're going to see if I win the league with Arsenal. And then on Monday, QPR returns with season four.